on storytelling. And then um, your written content should not be like a huge block of text. Nobody reads that. Even when I get text messages that look like that, I'm like, oh Lord, who sent me a book? Make it easy to read, space it out every line or two. This is not like a book report that we're turning in in college. We want to make it conversational. We want to make it easy to read, informal, even chat GPT. You can teach it how you speak and then it will start creating your answers in a more informal way. I don't love all of the flowery, formal, um, complex stuff because we're just there to, to hang out and chat. And this one can be a little controversial, but I have noticed that the posts that get the best engagement are accompanied by a photo of you or your pets or your family or your clients, like faces. It's called Facebook for a reason. So houses are great. You in front of a house is even better. And I'm not talking everyone, but a lot of them. It is your brand, you know, your social media is your brand. People should get a feel for your branding. And then how to stop people from scrolling. We'll get into some examples of hooks in a minute, but be conversational, make like read it and see if you would stop scrolling and read it, if that makes sense. And then I'm not the best at this, but video really helps people think that they know you. So they can see you just talking to them face to face, making eye contact with the camera. And a lot of your video, a lot of your content should be video content. Um, it's, it's easier to see people's personality on video, I think. And it really is, makes people think like they're just sitting there talking to you. So, social media, Facebook and Instagram are not the place that you need like a professional intro and outro. And it shouldn't feel like you're at an ad and have your logo everywhere. Just talk to the camera like you're talking to friends and keep it short. People don't want to watch 20 minute things. I mean, YouTube is a whole different thing. So this is really for Facebook and Instagram, but you can still write a caption and kind of remind them what to expect in the video. And it's good to use subtitles because a lot of people watch with without sound, but that is video. So to get a plan together, this is a good, easy method. And it, it seems overwhelming when we get more complex, but really every week, one personal content piece of content, one real estate piece of content, and every now and then a question. If you want to do a community related one, you know, be the mayor of your town. People like lists and stuff too, but the questions are so easy and that's what gets the most engagement. Even silly questions. What are you watching on Facebook? Or, uh, I was recently crying watching American Idol. I don't ever cry with like real life things, but American Idol gets me every time in weird ways. So I just posted out there, like what show or movie makes you cry every single time. And it has like 200 comments. And so it doesn't have to be hard, keep it simple, but just be consistent. If one post a week is, you know, a lot for you and a big step up, do it. And I also post the same thing on my Facebook personal business and Instagram, ideally like one day apart, but whatever baby steps, you know? So the point of personal content is really to get people to feel like they know you, connect with people and for them to like you. Like if somebody that I don't like on social media wrote a big long post, I'm probably gonna just keep scrolling because I don't know, I don't enjoy consuming their content. So personal content is just to like provide a little glimpse into your life and people want to work with people that they feel like they know. So create a connection. We're driven by emotion. I think if given the choice, like the best realtor in town and someone who made us feel good, who we really like to be around, I mean, obviously people don't want to work with a terrible realtor, but I'm going to work with people that I like that make me feel good. So it shouldn't look like an advertisement. It shouldn't have a call to action and be like, here's my most embarrassing story. Click on my guide for, you know, whatever DM me, if you need to buy a house, like leave that part off of the, these types of content. Okay. So yeah, share a little bit of your story, give people a little glimpse into your life. And we all know those people that talk about 
their mess, like in a really weird, vague ways that make you wonder, but don't do that. We're professional. You can talk about the lessons learned once you're on the other side of it, but don't talk about, don't be that drama social media person. I talked about my best friend. I'm an only child. I've always wanted a sister. She's the closest thing I've had to a sister. Um, I love that our kids are now friends. So just be personal and share a little bit. I know it's not easy. And sometimes we don't put, want to put all of our stuff out on the socials, but it is a really good way to connect with people. And you can also post your hobbies, what you like to do, um, anything you're into. Sports are easy. Mom life is so easy. I connect with all these moms on there talk, being real about like finding a Cheeto in their purse or just silly things like that. But training for your first marathon, you know, whatever, whatever you like, music, all the things, just be real and be you. I put a gym one, a gratitude journal. So personal can be lifestyle. It can be stories about your life or it can be philosophy, like what you're into. Um, and kind of like, I don't know why I carry a gun at open houses or the skills I learned in as a rower that make me an excellent realtor, how being a mom changed how I serve my clients. So it's kind of like a belief you hold based on your life and provides context about why you are who you are and what you do. I don't like to get into super controversial things like religion and politics but it is okay to talk about what your causes that you're passionate about. It will attract the people that, you know, resonate with you and have similar values. And it's okay to not be for everybody. We're not for everybody. No one's for everybody. You may repel some people, but trust me, it's okay. Like it, it would be a challenge working with some of these people too. And then the real estate stuff, like it doesn't have to be rocket science, but just give them a few tips. We forget how little our people know. So focus on them and offer some tips and tricks. It's okay to use you and speak directly to them. Like, hey, you really don't need to put 20% down and you probably shouldn't. There's a lot of other cool things you could do with that money. So they care about if you can help them and how you can help them. And then... I don't think I need to say this, but don't insult other agents. People don't get on social media to watch negative stuff. Um, again, I think I've gone over most of this, but just things to keep in mind during our process. Really every question that we answer when we're in front of clients could be social media content, especially if it's the same question that you ask. I mean, that you answer almost every transaction. So I did one, like the things I look for when seeing a home, like ignore the ugly carpet, ignore the smells and the paint. I mean, maybe don't ignore all the smells, but if it's temporary, but you know, just here are the things that I do different. I turn on the water and I look for foundation issues and whatever it is, it doesn't have to be rocket science, but let them know that you kind of know what you're doing. And then we talked about myth busting content. It's actually pretty powerful. Um, are you thinking of just using the listing agent to purchase your first home? Think again, it could cost you thousands, stuff like that. Um, here's the one I did about why you shouldn't put 20% down. And then if we did make a signature system, we can talk about that. We can talk about how our process solves your problems. Like I know you're busy, that's why you should just let us handle it. We will pay the vendors. We will coordinate times. We will let them in. We will, you know, do walkthroughs and make sure they got all the work done. You can just pay us back at closing out of your proceeds, like no big deal, but go more in detail about why you do things, how you do it and why it's important to them and how, how it helps solve their problems. And you can put a call to action on these. So um, here's an example of one of mine. You want to move, but your husband wants to stay. You want to pool. Your wife doesn't, you want more space further out. Your husband wants to stay close to town. If you can't agree, you're not alone. I've experienced it personally. And it happens all the time. That's why step one of our key move up method is the game plan meeting. Here's what this meeting looks like, blah, blah, blah. And then social proof. So these are case studies and testimonials. 
Um, they don't have to be on a cute template. In fact, I like just sharing like random texts or a screenshot of these. And it really kind of is other people saying how great you are. So this is earned and, oh, I put it in here, no screenshots, but stories, you can do screenshots, but tell the story of their client, um, where they were at the beginning, what the challenges were and where they are now. You can kind of, uh, help people see themselves in other clients and video testimonials, testimonials are amazing. If you can get them, um, in front of their new house or at closing is a great time to ask. So social proof and case studies and testimonials and PR is very powerful for people that may not have that longevity with you. Here's one of mine where I kind of told the story of their home. And then I wrote out their testimonial at the end. And then engagement content. This is the easiest kind. It's really easy. All it is is a call to action really, but it can be related to life or real estate. Um, one of them that I want to post soon, and you guys can steal my stuff, you know, anytime I don't care, but someone else posted this and I DM'd her and asked her if I could share it. Cause I thought it was a good question. And it was so interesting reading the answers, but the question was, what is something that you've done that you think no one else in my friends list has done or experienced or something? And the stories about people they've met or experience that they've had or whatever were super interesting to read and engage with. Like you're just having these conversations with people. But I thought that one was a good one. What did you wanna be when you grew up? What song do you know all the words to? They can be goofy and silly. It's just a place to engage. And, and I think people like them. People, people respond. They, they do. All right. Headlines. The first sentence or two is where people decide if they're going to read your content or not. We do not have long, um, focused time. See, I can't even talk, but people aren't going to pay attention. They're not on social media to do hard things. They want to just be entertained learn something quickly. So we've got to stop the scroll. And the first line is important. They make the decision on if they're going to read the rest of your content or not really quickly. And so after you create content, a quick little checklist, is this, does this sound like I'm talking to my best friend? Is it clear? Is it filled with love and intention? Does it make sense? Is there anything outstanding or confusing? Is it simple enough for a third grader to understand? And is it focused without a bunch of fluff? I feel like if stuff is too long, people just kind of zone out at the beginning. All right. I know I'm going fast. I'll get to your questions in just a sec. But again, don't, done is better than perfect. Posting is better than not posting. So even if it's all infographics and all social bay, sorry, love you social bay, but even if it's just, I'm a realtor every day, that's better than not posting. People will see it and read it and know you're a realtor, but so don't try to not post at all. Cause you're waiting for you to be perfect at it. Take messy, imperfect action, take action like Bambi on ice. I love that saying. Somebody said that to me and it kind of stuck and all my millennials. I know it's cringe. Like it is, it's uncomfortable. But come on, like door knocking and cold calling, that is so uncomfortable. It's all a little bit different and uncomfortable. And we have to get outside of our comfort zone if we want to serve more clients, if we want to do better and make more. So yeah, being poor is super uncomfortable. Having to, this is something that also <laughs> gets me, but I don't want to kneel down to my five-year-old and say, we can't go to Disney this year because I didn't do social media because I was scared. I was a coward. Like sorry, sorry guys, but, um, it's about you and your friends will still love you. I'm, I feel like I'm super obnoxious on social media, but if anything, it shows you who your real friends are. If, I mean, or if people want to be my friends, but don't want to consume my content, they won't, they'll just keep sc scrolling. So it will resonate with people that are for you and it'll attract them to you and who cares about everyone else. Right. Okay. That's all I have. 